Okay, hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Greg Furman and this is the Vantage Point AI Market Outlook for the week of August the 12th, 2024. Now, to get started this week, we'll begin with a very important US dollar index, another big week coming up with CPI data, but I think that the, the rate cut for September is pretty much baked in. So when we look at our Vantage Point software, the dollar remains bullish on the year while above 101.37. We are in a known period of dollar strength, which usually lasts up until about mid to late September. Then either way, regardless whether the Fed cuts or doesn't cut, the dollar usually sells off at the end of their fiscal fourth quarter, which is October 1. So the indicators right now are MA diff cross, our pink line crossing over the blue line to the upside is a contrarian buy signal but we still remain below the T-cross long, so our corrective move back to 103.82 appears imminent, but the CPI data uh, next week could change that very quickly, and the dollar could slip lower. So it is a fundamental trading week, but the indicators are warning that it is going to turn back up. And currencies, uh, by the way, guys, are very different than stocks, commodities, options. People are required to buy fiat currencies. They're not required to buy stocks or commodities, or even Bitcoin for that matter. So we always want to take that into consideration that there is real demand for the dollar in the month of September. But again, that contrarian signal remains uh, still the medium term outlook is bearish while below 103.82. Now, gold has made somewhat of a recovery here. But again, in most cases, gold starts to strengthen uh, after October 1, as I've mentioned many times before. But 23.26, our quarterly opening price, long still very, very attractive while above that area. Our T-cross long coming in at 24.07. That's the level we want to keep our eye on in the medium term, because again, this is an outlook, guys, not a recap that's something of something that's already happened. This video is being done on Saturday morning at 11.06 a.m. while the markets are closed for the next trading week. So when we look at this, we have an MA diff cross right on the zero line, but the predicted RSI is showing that we still have upward momentum. So what I would like to see is that we can, if we can retake and get back above the current Current monthly opening price of 2447, then we have a shot of getting over 2500. Now, with the equity markets for next week, the equity is taking a real uh, crazy hit on Monday. And the bulk of what caused that was an entirely uh, inappropriate comment that the Fed should execute emergency rate cuts. And there is there is absolutely no reason why he should do that and he did come out and say that that say this week uh on thursday i believe that if there is a rate cut sooner than september it will not have anything to do with what's happened this past week and again uh there is no reason for an emergency hike or an emergency cut there is no emergency period here guys from one labor report when multiple labor reports i might add have been bad so once again the equities should technically recover to some degree but usually August and September are not the best months for buying stocks. So this is a corrective move higher. Our predicted differences are, are uh, again, they're turning up, but still below the zero line. The neural index strength does look pretty good here, but we must overtake that very important T-cross long at around the 5,400 mark. And if we fail there, then again, as you can see, the the the, um, the quarterly opening price and the monthly opening price, these are now very substantial hurdles for for the S and P, the Nasdaq, uh, the Dow, the Dax 30 to get above their respectful level, uh, respected levels. So again, be careful. Even if we get above the T cross long, we still have significant headwind, headwinds up to 50, 55, 37. Now, when we look at oil, oil price is recovering, but again, in my respectful opinion only, uh, August is not the best month to be buying oil. We flip over to usually in most cases, not all the time, but in the last five years or longer, the seasonal pattern benefits natural gas, not oil. So uh, I 
don't think we're going to get above 78.54, the monthly opening price. We've just eked out a close above the T-cross long on a Friday. But be careful of oil contracts on late day Monday and Tuesday for a reversal lower. We do have a medium-term crossover that's taken place, but the long-term crossover has not. And natural gas prices are rising with that known seasonal uh, pattern. So the pattern on oil, usually it doesn't do that well uh, in August. It's already had its rally for the year and it's getting ready to move lower. Now I will point out, however, and this is something for the bulls, this is the second time we have touched the, the current yearly opening price. This is very important, guys, why we don't use a rolling performance model of a random 300 days, a random 30 days, or even a random five days. This is the current yearly opening price, and there's been excellent long trades twice off of here. Now, this was a solid move up when we came down back in in, uh, in June, and that's the power of seasonal patterns, guys. This is a seasonal pattern, but this is not. And so again, we've got tensions in the Middle East, all of these things, but at the end of the day, uh, this is not the same pattern that we saw in June, in my respectful opinion only, and it heavily favors natural gas, not oil. So again, watch your long-term crossover, and we're going to need at least a couple of days closing above the T-cross long at 76.62 before we bite on longs up here, okay? Now, when we look at that all-important, another fantastic week for, for Bitcoin on this foolishness on, on Monday, uh, these rumors of emergency rate cuts, we have to do emergency rate cuts, there was no, nothing behind those comments. Uh, so again, Bitcoin got caught up in the in the Monday sell-off, but then completely recovered back up to our T-cross long. Now, I will remind everybody each week, I know I may sound like a broken record, but I will remind everybody that the main buying opportunity for Bitcoin is closer to October once we get past the period of dollar strength. So right now, we our T-cross long is 61000 140 it will be I, I would be far more comfortable with bitcoin longs if we can get above uh, 64,654 the current monthly opening price again guys i don't want to look at a random 30 days at the start of the new month your monthly opening price is one of your best friends in trading because it will tell you from an unbiased standpoint above the monthly opening it's bullish the buyers are in control below the monthly opening the, the the bears are in control. So right now, I would argue the bears still remain in control until we can take out that particular level. Now, a lot of eyes on on the on the VIX this past week. I've discussed it uh, for several months now in this outlook. And again, whenever we see a, a a daily bar that looks like this, guys, don't ever buy a bar that looks like that because it was just an unprecedented move. I can't remember the last time I've seen the VIX move like this. I think it was probably in back in the financial crisis of 08. So again, uh, the VIX back under pressure here. Uh, but firmly above its current yearly opening price and the quarterly opening, a lot of heavy support on the VIX, and that's coming with our T cross starting with our T cross long at 1962, then our monthly at 1585, the yearly 1501. That quarterly is is very very important at this time of the year 1464. If we hold above that level, guys, then that tells me that the main indices are going to remain under pressure until we get past um, mid-September with the dollar. Now, again, when we look at the European equity markets, they fell prey to the same thing on Monday. But once again, the current yearly opening price, while they were giving a death sentence to stocks and the stock indices, I, I'm not in that camp. We have to break down below 16000 828 before we can make that call that the equity markets are officially in bear market territory. They are not, guys. That's If you attach a rolling performance model, you could make that argument, but it would be a false argument. And, and again, this is a line in the sand that is, uh, again, extremely, it's, it's objective. It's not subjective based on uh, this or that. It's, it's based on a line that, okay, we're still positive on the year. We've retraced lower. 
now we could be getting ready to move higher. This too will be a retracement to the T cross long, and that will be uh, 17,971. Uh, so once again, guys, uh, keep an eye on these, these key levels, but there is a clear buy signal with the MA diff cross that is forming on the way up. And as you can see, as it started moving back up, it was able to get back above its weekly opening price last week. So keep an eye on your weekly opening uh, price too, guys, because it's very, very important. Now, when we look at some of our main Forex pairs, uh, we did have some fun with this in the Vantage Point Live training room this past week. Once again, guys, when we look at that current yearly opening price on the Euro US pair, the market was incredibly bullish on this pair. But once again, it must clear. The Euro pair, has, the Euro US pair has not been positive in 2020, 2024. That's a, that's a fact, not fiction, right? So uh, as we approach that yearly opening price, uh, all of a sudden it started to lose momentum. Now we're still currently holding there is a positive here guys and that we're above our t cross long 108.76 the monthly opening 108.26 and again that very important quarterly opening price which i believe we will test is 107.32 now i believe we will test that before mid-september so on a pullback that's where i would be looking for longs between the t cross long and that yearly opening uh, quarterly opening price excuse me or for a trader that is on the sidelines in the month of August, then you would set buy limit orders above 110.38. And as soon as the euro breaks, if the euro breaks above that area, then you'll have a long ready to go uh, right out of the gate. Now, the U.S. Swiss franc has recovered on this dollar strength. I believe it can recover more. But once again, to demonstrate the power of an unbiased tool like the current yearly opening price, we came right down to that area. And mysteriously, with no identifiable support, it reversed. And again, uh, we're still positive on the year, but this I think that this is going to be a relatively shallow retracement higher. The quarterly opening there, 89.72, that's the level you want to watch. But the first area of major resistance is the T-cross long at 87.36, which is likely going to be uh, tested early in the week. But be careful of that Monday-Tuesday reversal that I've discussed. And there is CPI data coming out, and I believe it will be slightly softer but yeah again that's a that's that's subjective and what i just said it may be hotter and that could fuel into a dollar rally that we're expecting anyway it, going into early september so just be careful with those levels and of course the current monthly opening price at 87.80 now the pound dollar once again uh you can see is is fighting it out uh, the battle lines are pretty much drawn here guys on the current yearly opening price uh sitting at 127.32 but we're now we've slipped below the quarterly and the monthly and we've got our t cross long 128 that is the critical critical level for next week's trading we need to overtake that and then we need to get above 128.56 and stay above that i don't think that's going to happen guys until probably closer to october but again i could be wrong so we use that current yearly opening price of 127.32 we need a clean break of it and you can see that it's really struggling along here the indicators from vp are warning that we could be getting ready to move higher just watch these resistance levels now, the dollar yen remains uh, all over the map here, guys, and it's because of the Bank of Japan. But once again, um, that current yearly opening price, which most traders and investors don't even look at, they are in, they're wrapped up in some type of rolling performance model. They throw a whole bunch of different indicators, Fibonacci levels at things, and they miss the most simplest thing. What price did this pair open on the year at? It opened at 141.03. It's been above it all year. That is largely due to the carry trade, which I believe is going to start coming unwound if the, the Bank of Japan hikes again, which I think they will. 
and they're gonna they're they're gonna leverage that to get their currency a little stronger. Uh, but it's a fine line. So right now our retracement, our T cross long, 150.69. Shorts are currently heavily favored, but this is a fundamental trade of what happens to that very important carry trade. And when it comes apart and it comes unwound, it's usually uh, vicious. So be very very careful with this. Now, the U.S.-Canadian pair, once again, a pretty terrible jobs number coming out of Canada on Friday. I think we lost around 2,800 jobs, 2,800 jobs. Uh, but uh, the, the seasonal pattern, what can save the Canadian dollar is if the equity markets move higher. Uh, the high correlation the Canadian dollar has to, to the global equity markets and, of course, oil and some commodities. But the quarterly opening, 126, uh, 136.72, excuse me, that is the level to keep your eye on in next week's trading. If we continue to hold above this level, then the U.S.-Canada pair will continue its uptrend. But if we break down below the quarterly, we could start that slow grind toward the current yearly opening price at 132.50. The indicators in VP right now are very, very mixed on this one. Uh, this MA diff cross, uh, as you update your software weekly, keep an eye on that pink line because if it crosses back over this blue line, that will confirm what I already think, that the Canadian economy is going into recession or could be in recession right now for that matter, and a weaker Canadian dollar. And now, again, if the U.S. does go into recession, that will really hurt the Canadian dollar because that's our biggest trading partner. So keep an eye to see if we get that contrarian signal to say that, look, this, is, this uptrend is still in place and we're getting ready to turn higher. But it 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 is helpful to give everybody an air, a line in the sand. Uh, we're above the yearly, we're above the quarterly, we're below the monthly. That's the only thing here, guys. So 136.72, keep your eye on that particular level all of next week, okay? Now, the Aussie, the, the CAD, the New Zealand, all very similar trades, and they're all very highly correlated to equities. So right now, you can see that the Aussie is really trying to push higher. But I believe it's too early uh, to call this a bull market. We, as again, as I discussed several weeks ago, leveraging the current yearly opening price, 68.12, that was an epic failure at that particular level. But uh, I would argue we had some pretty good support down here in the lows around 65.08. And then it, this obviously this pair got caught up in Monday's nonsense. And again, I re reiterate, there is absolutely nothing in in anything that's come across my desk that would suggest the Fed needs to do emergency rate cuts. He should have cut months ago. Yes, we all know that. But emergency rate cuts? No, no. We need to remove that language because there is no immediate emergency uh, at all. So right now, uh, for next week, excuse me, our T-cross long, 65.72. We've got to hold above the T-cross long if this has any chance at all. But if we slip below that monthly opening price, I believe that that is is our is is likely hopefully the the low for the year and I I know hope is not a strategy here guys but this was a crazy bar and I think they flushed out everything they needed they needed to, they flushed all the stops out that they could and so again the low of that bar 6350 is the support that we are going to use uh, until such time it breaks but again I would like to stay above, hold above the monthly opening, 65.42. That would can confirm that uh, the dollar is starting uh, to weaken. The Kiwi is slightly stronger than the Aussie, and that's because of the big sell-off on the Kiwi a few weeks ago. And now it's starting to recover. So our T-cross long there, 59.70. But right now, heavy support along that monthly opening price. That level, 59.51. Right there, as you can see, this pink line appears to be getting ready to cross back down. So what we can take from the, the stock traders can take from the U.S.-Canadian pair, the Aussie-U.S. and the New Zealand-U.S. is that these currencies are often barometers for your stock market. If these three currencies weaken, then that tells me stocks are in trouble. So be very, very cautious in the first couple of trading days this coming week because it is a, it is a data-dependent week yet again. So with that said, this is the Vantage Point AI Market Outlook for the week of 
August the 12th, 